All right, guys, welcome to Daddy Share Space. And for the first time, my name is Telly. So I've been doing uh, these YouTube videos for the past just over a year. And I've actually enjoyed the journey. Um, I think it's fun to kind of create content and to do different things. And uh, so today, I guess, uh, I just want to share a little bit about me. I'll kind of maybe share a little bit over time. But for today, what I want to talk about is how I afford my tools and technology. So that just kind of goes basically into my day job. So for the past uh, 20 years, I have been a registered nurse. I've worked across uh, mainly three specialties. I started out in intensive care nursing, medicine intensive care to be specific in CCU. And then uh, I did that for about, I guess it was two or three years, give or take. And then I became a emergency room uh, nurse. I worked in a trauma center for uh, many years, became a charge nurse over a trauma center for a short span of time before going back to travel nursing. Uh, just rewinding back, I became that medicine ICU nurse. I worked as a for a year and then I became a travel nurse. I did travel nursing for a bit, went back uh, to my home state and became a uh, an emergency room nurse. Uh, learning trauma, TNCC, ENPC, and then, you know, getting certified and all those things. And then I went back to travel nursing. Um, and uh, I did that for the next, I guess, six years. And then for the past uh, about 10 years or so now, I have been a uh, gastroenterology nurse. And for those that don't know what that is, it... Um, I actually uh, assist with uh, colonoscopies and upper endoscopies and that type of thing. Um, so it's pretty cool. I mean, that's you know that's what I do. So, anyways, um, that is how I afford to buy my tools and technology and so on and so forth. Um, I guess I'll go a little bit into how I became a nurse. Uh, so. I, growing up uh, in high school, I really was not a person that really applied himself. I didn't uh, have a lot of a clear vision, if you will, for the future. Um, but uh, my mom was a nurse. She actually became a nurse uh, later in life. And, you know, so I kind of got, um, I guess you would say, exposed to that through her. And by the time I got around to becoming, you know, like a senior in high school or whatever, or actually graduating from high school, um, I decided I was going to go to college. And uh, my mom was like, for what? Because I was kind of like one of those class clown types, you know, one of those people not really bringing a whole lot of attention to myself. But I wasn't just I wasn't really the type of person that was just really all about the books. You know, I just I don't even know why I went to school, but I went barely graduated. So anyways, um, my mom was like, for what? What are you going to school for? And at the time, I didn't. Uh, I, I think I had decided that I was going to do. Well, no, let me rewind. In my senior year of high school, we had this program called uh, AVTS, Area Vocational Technical School. And um, back when my mom was in uh high school they used to offer a similar feature where you could become what's called an LPN or a licensed practical nurse out here in California it's called a licensed vocational nurse um, but basically it's like a year of training and you you know you become like a nurse that's under a registered nurse and so I thought I had signed up for that and once I got into the program I ended up finding out this is during my senior year of high school I ended up finding out that it was a certified nurse's assistant program and so I ended up having to get like 240 hours to graduate high school and I remember um, at the time um, you know doing that and you know being a, a young man and and having to do some of the things you have to do as a nurse's assistant helping clean people up and stuff that really turned me off and I was like yeah this is not for me I did what I had to do to actually graduate um, high school but then um, afterwards I ended up um, I still went to college, and um, but I didn't, you know, well, 
yeah, I started going to college, but I wasn't really, you know, sure what I was going to do at that at that season. Um, I ended up getting a job um, later on. I, I kind of stepped away from college for a while, and I ended up getting a job at a mutual funds company in the mailroom. And they used they had some kind of program where you could actually um, somehow move up in the company or whatever. I had heard about. It. I don't know if it was real or not, but I heard about it, and I was interested in that. But um, it really just didn't, um, things didn't work out in, in that way. And I ended up um, leaving that job. And um, for a very short time, I, um, my stepfather, he was in the trades. He did insulation. My mom was a registered nurse. But they actually um, tried to start their own, like, home remodeling company. And for a short span of time, I actually kind of was like a gopher apprentice working with them and I did that for a little bit and then I was like you know I don't want to not have a degree when I'm 30 so I went back to school when I got back in school I was like uh, one semester outside of getting in the nursing program so I was like I'll just do that so I signed up for the nursing program um, and got in there I was getting my doing my classes and ended up getting elected class president at that season, I mean, it's just an associate's degree program. It wasn't like a major university or anything like that. But I ended up getting elected class president, um, having to say a speech in the end, and um, you know, for our, our graduation, and then um, graduated. Now I remember back then I was telling my classmates that I was only going to be a nurse for like a year or two because I had my eyes set on becoming a CRNA, which is a certified registered nurse anesthetist. You know, I never really wanted to stay as a nurse, at least back then. And um, the problem is, uh, what I, well, the problem that I ran into, once I graduated, um, you had to, uh, well, I started my first job at the University of Kansas Medical Center in the ICU. Um, shout out to, to them for giving me an opportunity, a new grad, to come right into the ICU. Um, it was rough, but I made it. Um, the thing is, uh, when I went into the University of Kansas Medical Center, and because I had such a, um, I didn't have a whole lot of uh, clinical training in the ICU because I only went to an ADM program. I didn't go to a BSN program and have one of those long little training sessions. I think my whole ICU um, training was like, like two hours you know I wrote down vital signs twice and then that was it um, but I was adamant about getting into the ICU right out the bat because you needed an ICU at least a year of ICU to qualify for the uh, CRNA program so um, I signed up uh, I, I'm working at the University of Kansas in the ICU I'm taking classes to bridge to get my bachelor's in nursing and, um, you know, so I'm working and doing both of those at the same time. Well, it proved to be a, a steep learning curve coming from an ADM program, going into a teaching facility um, like the University of Kansas in the ICU. You know, um, my job and those patients took precedence over my education. So I ended up stopped. I stopped taking classes and I just focused on, you know, getting through that first year of nursing. Uh, in, in you know as far as practice and I actually used to work like probably an extra shift every week because I wanted to have more than a year's worth of experience after my first year of working as a registered nurse and um, it all worked out and you know I gained a ton of skills I mean by the end of that year you know I was you know I was feeling pretty confident in my ability and actually towards the end of that year I became um, I was doing working at the University of Kansas, but I was also um, doing, I signed up for what's called registry. And what registry is, um, actually going back to being a, C, a certified nurse's assistant, um, you could work at a facility, whether it be like a hospital or like a, a nursing home, or you could work what's called registry, where um, facilities would have sick calls and they would call into the registry or agency and say hey do you have someone to fill our role for the day so that they didn't have to work short 
So I did that as a certified nurse's assistant. And then once I became a registered nurse and I you know, was close to the end of my first year of working, I felt confident. And so I actually um, became a registry, uh, a registry registered nurse. So I was working at that level um, uh, in, in, in the Kansas City area. So that's how I ended up working at tons of different hospitals in the Kansas City area. I mean, I worked at Research Medical Center, Menorah Medical Center, um, uh, I know basically almost all the hospitals in the Kansas City, greater Kansas City area, I worked at them. Um, just doing shifts here, shifts there, whatever, but my primary job was at the University of Kansas Medical Center. And so um, the thing is when you do, do registry, you don't get any kind of benefits. You don't get health care, you don't get um, any kind of uh, sick time or anything like that, but what you did get was extra pay. So when I graduated from nursing school, um, a lot of my coworkers, they went to work at hospitals like Providence Medical Center and different facilities like that. And at that season, they was making like, you know, $22 an hour when they came out. Um, and I, choosing to go work at the University of Kansas, I was making like 16. So that's, you know, a little bit of a difference or whatever, but I wanted those skills. I wanted, you know, um, Providence was like a private hospital. So it was just a different, a different plan. Whereas uh, the University of Kansas is a teaching facility, I was going to get exposed to a whole lot of, of different things. Um, so anyways, um, I, um, so I started doing registry nursing. And when I, as a registry nurse, uh, my pay, you know, basically I was making like $36 an hour. So it, on my regular job, I was making $16 an hour. And then when I would do registry around the city, I would be making like $36 an hour. So after a while, you know, and I was working a lot harder at KU than I was doing at these registry jobs because a lot of them were a lot of private type, you know, hospitals or whatever. And um, at that time, their level of acuity for intensive care patients was a lot lower. I mean, it, was, it felt like taking care of telemetry patients by comparison to KU at that time. You know, this is back in... Uh, was it 2002, 2003, somewhere around in that area, right? And so um, I ended up um, doing the registry, doing both for a while. And I, I don't know, I just, you know, I had that plan to become a CRNA, but I got knocked off course because, you know, at that time I couldn't really do both. I couldn't do, you know, the, the nursing because I was working day shift as well. And then also, you know, keep up with my classes. So I focused on, you know, making sure I, I got all my skills as a nurse, became a registry nurse as well, was doing both at the same time. And then when I got to about my year, I remember um, I was about to start to learn uh, the balloon pump, which is basically a, a machine that you use for a person that's on uh, like, uh, you know, basically like heart transplant or whatever type of level whatever their heart is really bad so you you put them on this balloon pump to actually uh, manage their you know it basically like a external heart if you will per se i'm speaking about it in a novice way because um i was actually signed up to be learning that and i actually i went to my manager and told him that i was leaving and you know i'm glad i know he was happy that i told him that because then he didn't have to pay for that training for me to to go through that just to leave so anyways, I left and I went full-time registry for, I don't know, maybe about three to six months or something like that. And, you know, I just, you know, I was still young and, you know, making mistakes. And, you know, I was a nurse in one hand, but in the other hand, I was just, you know, being a young person. And I just felt like I needed a change of scenery. So that's when I decided that I was going to go ahead and, um, you know, make this jump and go to, you know, just do something different. I was going to go to California. Now, this wasn't like totally out of the hat. As I said, you know, I was a 49ers fan. That was one of the elements. But when I was in nursing school and because I was like the president of my class, I got selected to go to some kind of a nursing convention. And it happened to be in, I want to say Reno, Nevada. Right. And so me and another one of the students, we got flown out and stayed in, you know, some hotel. And we actually went to this convention uh, for nurses or, or for nursing students. And, you know, I remember I rented a car and I'm driving around. And I see this sign that says, you know, X amount of miles to San Francisco. So 
I kind of, you know, blew off some of those um, conventions or whatever, and uh, or meetings, whatever they were. And I, me and that um, other nursing student, we dropped in this car. It was actually a convertible, and we drove down to the Bay Area. And I remember driving through San Francisco for the first time, and you know, it was just kind of surreal because. You know, when I grew up and I started watching football, at that time, the 49ers were on top. You know, that was Joe Montana, Ronnie Lott, Roger Craig, Jerry Rice, Brent Jones, um, Charles Haley, and the like. And so I guess it's just kind of natural to when you kind of start as a young person to be like, oh, I, I picked that team. You know, I never was a Chiefs fan. I don't have no problems with the Chiefs now. You know, shout out to Patrick Mahomes. He's, he's a baller. But anyways, and uh, good on them to get that that Super Bowl win after all of those years. But um, uh, I'm not as into sports as I used to be. I mean, I still kind of follow it, but I'm not that deeply into it anymore. So anyways, um, so we drove out to San Francisco and I remember, you know, just, you know, it just it looked so different than, you know, Kansas City where I had grew up. And um, so it kind of planted a bug in my head, but you know, go back to graduating um, college, working at the University of KU, focusing on that. It was kind of like as the dust settled towards the end, once I left KU and I was working as a registry nurse and I was just kind of, I guess you say in a sense, feeling kind of unfulfilled, feeling like my life was just going in circles and not really moving forward. And um, cause I was, you know, not married, didn't have kids at the time or whatever. And I decided, you know what, um, I'm just gonna make a change. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm going to California. And I remember it's like over the course of a week, I made that decision. I didn't tell none of my family, I didn't tell anybody. But then on that weekend, that Friday, I went out with friends or acquaintances. I don't know if I, you know, I don't know. I'm not a big person to call people friends. But anyways, I went out with acquaintances on that Friday and I told him, hey, you know, I'm going to California. They was like, yeah, right. So that Saturday night we went out again. I was like, yeah, I'm going to California. He was like, yeah, right. That Sunday, I packed up my car. Um, at that time I had a house, I owned a house in Kansas um, and I had two cars. I had a 95 Mazda Miata and back then I had a, I think it was a 2003 uh, BMW 325 Xi, the all wheel version or whatever. And I think I was still on my 30-day tags on that car, to be quite honest, or something like that. But anyways, um, I loaded everything up in that BMW, and I drove uh, 24 hours straight, 1,600 miles, to Sacramento, California. Now, you know, I consider myself a Christian. I'm a struggling Christian, but I consider myself a Christian. And back then, you know, the whole way out. I'm listening to all kinds of gospel music, you know, Fred Hammond, Yolanda Adams, whatever the case may be, and listening to the Bible on CD on the way out. And, and I needed that. I needed that because um, I did not have a job lined up in California. I did not have a place to stay lined up in California. I had no friends or family in California. I didn't even have a California license, all right? So I get all the way out to Sacramento, spend the night in the hotel. The next day I get up and I go to the uh, California Board of Nursing. I'm standing up in line and there's a guy in front of me. And uh, he, you know, he turns around and he's like, hey, you got a job or whatever. I was like, no. And he said, you know, well, if you're interested, you can come back to my office. Well, I didn't have nothing else going on. So I went ahead, I went to his office and, um, he set me up. Uh, well, I told him I wanted to work in San Francisco. I was adamant about that. You know, at this point, I hadn't even been to San Francisco yet. So I told him I was adamant I wanted to work in San Francisco. So this dude, who happened to be a travel recruiter, he put me up. Um, and this company was Nurse Finders at the time. Not sure if they're still around. But anyways, he put me up in a hotel in San Francisco for I think it was two or three weeks until he found me a job. Now, as I told you before, I was listening to my gospel music and all that type of stuff. When I left Kansas City, you know, I was kind of broke. I only had like, you know, $1,200 to my name, right? I had $1,200 to my name and a 700 and something dollar car payment on that BMW plus another 200 and something dollar car payment on my Miata. And I had a house payment and all this stuff, but I left Kansas City with $1,200 and bills to pay. So anyways, um, he put me up in this in this hotel until he found me a job. I got my first job as a travel nurse at the San Francisco VA in the ICU. 
and uh, it was a great job. It was a great job. Actually, um, I ended up staying there for like 11 months on that job. So it's kind of like I just moved from one main job to another main job. And at the time, I remember when I got in on the pay scale, um, because as a travel nurse, you know, you, you don't just get your pay, but you also get a certain amount of money for, you know, food every day. Um, that part is allegedly tax free and then you also get your housing and because I owned a house in Kansas which means my residency was still in Kansas um, all of that housing and food expenditure expenditures under the law was like I don't know tax free or something like that so but my hourly wage was like I want to say like thirty six dollars an hour so it was very it was comparable to what I was making in um, uh, as, a, as a registry nurse but the difference was I'm living in a whole nother state um, and I didn't have to pay for utilities I didn't have to pay rent I didn't have to pay any of that right and um, you know I ended up having an apartment it was off of 2000 Broadway in San Francisco and it was I, I had a bay window there was the length of the apartment and when I looked out my window I could see you know uh, the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz out of this bay windows it, it was amazing I mean for for a guy that came from Kansas City making $16 an hour as a new grad at that time when I was sitting in that apartment my package deal was like worth like $60 an hour at that time you know, I was only getting like 36 in actual pay, but the rest was going towards, you know, you know, food and incidentals and, and, and um, uh, this apartment. So as I said, you know, I, I did that for um, the next 11 months and I, you know, overall, I'll say I loved it. But there were things that, you know, I, you know, it wasn't all green pastures because San Francisco is not Kansas City. All right. The way they drive, the whatever I had, to, I had to. I had to take on a whole new persona. I mean, the people, you know, they driving all crazy. And, you know, I mean, I'm from Kansas where things is a lot slower and, you know, traffic aid is not quite so intense. And so, to be honest, uh, you know, I, I don't know what I expected from San Francisco. I guess I thought it to be, you know, just like Kansas, just called San Francisco. Wasn't that. And so, as a result, at first, uh, other than the job and the money and the apartment, the environment, the culture, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the people out here in, in California weren't quite as friendly as they were in Kansas. And so um, I was actually kind of miserable. I mean, I, I kind of, I, I don't know how to explain it. I enjoyed being in San Francisco. I enjoyed the culture. And, you know, like I used to walk to the movie theater and, you know, walk all around San Francisco. All of these things I love. But it was, I probably have to say, it's probably one of the loneliest times in my life. Like, I, I really, it was difficult to connect. I did go to a church. I did end up meeting a few people here and there. But for the most part, you just felt like, I felt like an outsider out here in San Francisco. I did get to go to a few, uh, I went to a 49ers game. That was when Jeff Garcia was um, quarterback and, um, what's his name? Uh, Terrell Owens was a wide receiver. I think, what was it? Uh, what was his name? I can't remember. His Bryant Young was on the defensive line at that time. Um, so I remember that. I remember the game that I went to. They was actually playing the Saints, and uh, Reggie Bush was on the team at that time. Anyways, so lots of lots of um, fun experiences during that time. You know, this is going to turn into kind of a long video so I'll kind of try to you know maybe pick up an add-on or maybe I'll break this off into parts um so I, I worked that year oh as I said I, I wasn't really feeling San Francisco as far as the culture I like the way it looked I like certain aspects of it you know I would go over to Oakland and hang out and you know just kind of just it was just a different culture but you know as I said it was probably one of the loneliest times in my life so anyways um uh, a little bit into I think after so with a travel nurse you do three month contracts and remember I said I stayed like 11 months which is almost a year and um, I think after probably about the first or second contract I was kind of ready to go home you know I was a little bit homesick or whatever I wasn't really feeling California but I had an issue come up so I'm on my way to work and I was I think I was going, I don't know what street it was, Laguna or something like that. But anyways, I made a right turn 
onto Geary Street. And I didn't notice that there was a sign that said no right turn. So I made that right turn. Cops pulled me over. And he's like, hey, you know, do you have any weapons or whatever? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got my gun in the car. So when I left Kansas, I had my own house. I had a gun. And I didn't want to lock my gun up and leave it in my house in Kansas. So I thought it was a responsible thing to do to bring it with me to California. I didn't, I didn't, wasn't responsible enough to look into California law. So I knew nothing about that at that time. And mind you, this is back in 2003 when this actually occurred. And so um, the apartment that they put me into, that 2000 Broadway, they actually had like, they actually had like a, a maid service too that would come through and change out your towels and do all of that type of stuff. So I didn't feel comfortable leaving my gun in that apartment either. So I just left it in my trunk. I didn't think no harm, no foul. So um, once I told the cop that I had the gun in my car, he immediately took me to jail. You know, they processed me to make sure, you know, I wasn't doing anything illegal. You know, they had to do all the little background checks on me or whatever. And I was on my way to work. So I missed that shift. But anyways, um, uh, they towed my car. And because I didn't know all the rules and the laws and so on and so forth, they towed my car and it was in the tow for like a month. So once I got out and all that was kind of cleared up, it wasn't fully clear because I had to go to court a few times to get all that straightened out. And it actually delayed me getting my California license because when I initially came, I got a temporary California license. And then they had to, because of that situation where, you know, I have, you know, my gun in the trunk. Um, they wanted to make sure I was no kind of criminal or whatever, so that delayed me actually getting my official California license. Um, but anyways, uh, so I didn't know when I was going to get my car back. So what I ended up doing was I flew back home, I got my Miata, drove it all the way out to California, ended up having to pay like something like $200 a month in my apartment building uh, extra for parking for the Miata and I think I was already paying 200 for the um, for the BMW which was now in the tow and so eventually um, uh, after a month uh, I was able to get my car it cost me several thousands of dollars to get it back they actually gave me a ticket for not having a California license too so they forced me to get a California license at that time um, and I had to get and I got California tags because remember I came out there on like 30 day tags from when I had bought my BMW So now I had California tags California license, which ended up causing problems later when I went back to Kansas, but um, So that me having to continue to go to court to get that stuff s situated or whatever which it did get resolved in the end they gave me you know my gun back you know, I don't know, like around 11 months later, total, well, you know, when I got to that 11 month mark, they gave me my gun back in a brown paper bag with, uh, but they kept my clip, you know, because I had a clip in, in you know, in, in the trunk as well. They kept my clip or whatever, and they just gave me my gun back or whatever. So I took that back to Kansas and, uh, you know, yeah, didn't bring it back. But um, so that um, that actually kind of forced me to dig deeper into the California culture and even though there were a lot of things that I didn't like um, being forced to stay because I had to keep going you know to court because they just kept giving me different court dates or whatever um, <clears throat> and I was still working at um, the VA finishing out my contract um, I started to see something in you know California in San Francisco that you know, I actually liked and um, I went a few times to Sacramento. Sacramento reminded me a lot of home of Kansas or whatever. So, um, you know, that was like my first experience as a as a nurse out here in the Bay Area as a travel nurse. And um, the rules of a travel nurse are that you can't stay anywhere. Like if you stay somewhere like a year then that becomes your residence and that totally throws out the window this whole tax-free housing whatever the case may be then you just become a person with two residences or whatever so at the 11 month mark the uh, San Francisco VA approached me and asked me um, if I wanted to you know take a full-time job and I remember as an older gentleman there he was like this is a good job you should take it this and that and the other but um, I was young you know inexperienced and 
at that time, um, when I took my first travel job, my recruiter was telling me, yeah, it just starts here. And it was like, you know, you know, I, here it is. I didn't even inquire to find out how much they were making at the San Francisco VA at that time or about the benefits. All I knew was I was making the $36 an hour, which was premium pay back home. And I had housing on top of that. And I knew that if I took a regular job, then I would be responsible for everything and I would have to find a place. And I already had a house back in Canada. I, you know, it would have been a mess. But um, I didn't take the job. Hindsight 2020, I should have took that job. I should have took that job, but I didn't. And so um, I went back home. And I'm, when I got back home, I just did registry in the area in Kansas City and in Kansas and Missouri. I was doing registry around town. And um, while I was there, I mean, let me tell you something, getting out of your home state, it changes you because um, I was happy to go back home, but I just felt completely unfulfilled. You know, it was nice to see some of the people that I grew up with or that I knew from back home, but it just, you know, I was there for a few months and I was like, I gotta get out of here. And, you know, I had this appetite in me of, for wanting to, you know, go back to California and you know so I did um, so anyways I think uh, I'm going to wrap up this video here I'll probably talk some more on this topic um, I had to make a note for me you know to start to start in LA I guess is what I'll say um, anyway uh, yeah so that is how I buy my tools in tech I've been a registered nurse for the last 20 years and um, I'm very grateful I'm very thankful for my career um, it's it's taught me a lot of humility um, it's taught me a lot about compassion and and selflessness and you know being a Christian it's you know it is you know that good Samaritan it, it's it's a way of life you know every day I go to work I'm helping someone that's you know that needs help and you know so that's something you know it's not always easy but um it is something that i can look in the mirror and and be proud of and be thankful for so anyways guys thanks for listening to the ramble i'll see you in my next video take care